Sega. Hello all and welcome to the quest battle Azag's Ardama. As mentioned in Rally Point 30, I'm joined by Darren McNally. Hello. Who is has played this battle previously and uh, we're going to be talking through it so we can properly illustrate everything that's happening in the game. So we're going to let you guys listen to the general speech, we're going to be quiet and then we'll join you in the deployment phase. Those stupid flouncy humies think they can traps all over our sacred ground. That burial man is Mork's property, not some fishy smelling like eggs. Roman Ed, stop whispering at me! I know! Come on, Ed. We're gonna stab these kids and send them running back to their pretty towers. I've had my visions from Mork himself. He reckons we do this to get sort my armor out real good, but I won't have to knock you all about. What's that? Yes! We'll go serve afterwards! Let's go kill some knights! So we're in the deployment phase. Darren, talk us through what you did. Alright, so this is not the first time I had played it. Um, I decided to play a little bit more defensive this time around, which, which worked really well. Um, I put down my goblin archers toward the back on this little hill, and uh, decided to flank them with the slightly heavier orc arrow boys, which you'll see in a second on the left. Um, so these guys, they're not very heavily armoured, uh, they, they are just archers. And playing defensive means that you deny the enemy to the ability to be in range with their artillery. So it plays off really well. We're against three Bretonian armies here, one main one and two Bretonian expeditions uh, that come in from the sides with some cavalry. So here's the Orc Arrow Boys, they're decent melee combatants, which means that basically if they get flanked, they can kind of hold their own, they don't just break immediately. I would say generally speaking for a green skin army is that goblins are faster but weaker and the, the Orcs are uh, tougher but slower. Yeah, it definitely seems to be that way. Um, so here we got the Orc Boys, it's just my, kind of my solid core of... Smelly. Of, yeah, pretty, pretty stinky, alright. Um, they're kind of my solid front line of infantry, not, not amazing infantry, but pretty good. And they can hold their own, they've got 120 in a unit, so a little bit more than most infantry units. Um, so they're definitely able to hold out. And I've just activated guard mode, which is an old favourite for a lot of Total War fans. And basically that means that if they are engaged in a unit, they won't chase that unit down if they win that engagement. They'll stay, put, stay in place and uh, kind of hold their ground no matter what. And I've done the same for the archers and turned off skirmish mode. So I'm really setting up for a defense here. Putting my cavalry on the flanks, the orc boar boys. These are shock cavalry. Uh, very slow, but deliver quite a powerful punch in their charge bonus. So putting them on this little hill here gives them that extra modifier to their charge bonus, uh, which means that they'll do more damage, basically. It's worth noting that this is pretty early on in Azag's campaign progression, so it's early tier units. So you can't, won't really see any of the big monstrous creatures as you've seen previously with the Greenskin army. It's true, and we are on a beta, beta build at the moment, so you're, you're prone to seeing some slight graphical glitches and stats and things like that aren't final, it's still subject to balancing. Um, There's Azag on the Wyvern, so it's worth noting as well that it's quite unusual for uh, a green skin to have anything other than the Law of the Big and the Little War, but Azag has the Crown of Sorcery which gives him the Law of Death magic, and uh, if you listen closely to the general speech, he's also a little mental as a result of wearing it, so this the, the point of this quest battle is for him to regain, well, have his armour imbued by the shamans and by Gork and Mork to be proper. And uh, yeah, he's, he's in the final quest of that chain. Alright, so let's start the battle and see how we get on. Um, so basically, there's three armies as we mentioned before, uh, and the two expeditionary forces are made up of just purely cavalry. Uh, so here's one of them here. I think they're mounted yeoman cavalry. Um, belonging to Bretonia, and as we move up towards the hill, we can see their catapults. There's Fey Le Fey. There's Fey Le Fey, uh, some halberdiers, and yeah, that's basically... It's a beautiful environment as well. Yeah, it's looking really good, and the music you can kind of hear kicking in as well. Really nice ambient music. So they're, they're already kind of on the move, um, very quickly pushing up towards me. Now, I'm not actually in range of their artillery, so their artillery is going to have to come down off the hill, which is something that, if you deploy at the front of that deployment across this little river here, you're going to be dealing with their artillery right from the onset. So I found a great strategy is just to kind of hang back and wait to deal with their cavalry and then to play aggressive. Although if you play aggressive in the beginning, their cavalry tends to back off and join up with their main army, which you don't want, want to happen. Uh, so we're just getting ready here for the first kind of volleys, the archer volleys, as the cavalry kind of comes into my 
into my line of sight. You can turn off the arrow trolls as well, but it's useful for us to be able to see where the arrows are coming from. Yeah, especially in a video when people just want to have a quick look at what's going on, uh, the arrow trails definitely help. So I've just activated the Spirit Leech spell. Uh, it lasts about 15 seconds, and 15 seconds, and it's a direct damage spell. So it just basically directly affects their health, lowering the health of every unit in, or every entity in that unit. Um, it's not a very expensive spell. The Winds of Magic barely got touched at all. And it was just a little test spell. I wanted to test the water a little bit as the unit approached my front lines and give it a bit of damage. And it seemed to work. They backed off after they, their initial charge. So yeah. magic is quite uh, tricky to use, and it's it's not overpowered in the sense that it's going to wipe out a whole unit. It's Each spell is specifically tailored to have a function, so you need to really carefully read what the effects of the spell are before using, otherwise it could damage you in uh, some very interesting ways. Yeah, you, you can see later on, actually, we'll show you some miscasts and things like that, but even the most powerful spell doesn't wipe out the unit. So a lot of people are kind of worried uh, on social media and things like that, that magic, how, how's it going to work and is it going to be too powerful? It's definitely a case-by-case -case scenario. Um, it's also a little bit of luck involved whether it actually does exactly what you planned on it doing or not. Yeah, random um, movement design. is uh, in, in some of the spells, vortex spells, for example. And you also so. have the miscast chance, even on ones that don't move. So exactly. it, it can always go wrong. Uh, so you, you'll notice a lot of cavalry is actually managing to get around behind me here and start flanking me. And I had a little bit of a problem here. My goblin wolf rider archers, which are kind of archer cavalry, missile cavalry, are getting chased down by this Bretonian cavalry unit and they obviously can't deal with them in melee. So I got Azag to call another spell, um, the Fate of Buna, which is a much stronger, similar to the one I cast before, but it's much, much stronger. And it means that when I attack this cavalry unit now, they're going to be much weaker, their health is dropping rapidly and they're starting to break and route even now, even though I have two units that shouldn't normally win uh, in that engagement. So it's all about getting the right engagements and really casting off spells and holding onto your winds of magic until you feel like it's right, uh, the right time to use it. So their main army is starting to push down the hill now as well, as they're slowly trying to get into my range. Uh, you maintaining a good line? Yeah, so that's, that's kind of uh, in part due to guard mode as well, because they're not just chasing whoever they're fighting, they're holding the line, and uh, that gives you a huge morale buff as well. Holding the line is really, really important. Azag's just hanging back on the wyvern. Yeah, that's exactly the way I use him. Really, is just support. Because he has so much magical spells, it, you, know, you just leave him in the center and to go wherever he can to help. And being on a flying unit, he's extremely mobile. He can literally just fly over the battle and uh, go where he needs to, which we'll show an example of later. Um, so this unit as well this is another example of using magic again. I use the aspect of the Dread Knight to buff the morale of this unit. It's starting to rat and break, but once I bring it kind of behind the lines and buff its leadership, it comes back and uh, it gets into my control again. It's taken a lot of damage though, but we can definitely use it later on in some aspects. Aspects. See Aspects what you did there. The That's yes. right. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, we're kind of just dealing with the rem uh, the remnants of these cavalry skirmishes, I guess. Um, and we're, we seem to have one on the right side. You'll notice some of my units are chasing because I haven't put them onto guard mode. It's sometimes it's good to do that because they will need to uh, chase down routing units to make sure they don't reform and come back. And here we can see the catapults are now in range and they're starting to fire. It's quite a lot. I think there's almost more than 12 units of. Uh, or individual catapults firing on me here, so it's quite quite a lot to deal with. You could see the Br Bretonian general there, Anno Michaud, um, back in the distance. Yeah, he's just chilling next to the artillery. He kind of stays back with his with the main army a little bit. Uh, same with Fay Le Fay, who we'll see as well. Uh, so I decided at this point that just to push up, I was just about ready. Um, we had just one final engagement to deal with. thought I'd bring my, my uh, orc board boys out into the, the hill over on the right start really because their cavalry is pretty much all gone now almost so now I have the cavalry advantage even though they're quite damaged um, and now we can really start put, putting the herd on uh, the music as well at this moment is just absolutely epic it was all kicking off right at the right time and uh, yeah I decided that my wyvern was gonna go towards the um, towards the enemy artillery because you can just fly over the battlefield and we're gonna show you a really cool spell here doesn't always go in your favor but this uh, oh it's my favorite the purple son of Zerus that's right um, it's a vortex spell again. This can have magical movement, so you've got to be really careful where you place it, and certainly not anywhere near your own units. Look at that! Watch it. So basically, I did this a few times, and it, it kind of doubled back on my own guy, and didn't really go quite as well. So there is a bit of a random chance that it's going to work, um, and it worked beautifully there. And I landed my uh, general down on their artillery just to keep them busy. It doesn't <laughs> it's actually... legendary lord and warhammer. Uh, legendary lord. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm still, you know, an old school total war player. I'm still, still learning. 
Um, Good job I'm here then. Yeah, That's exactly. Nice. Um, so here we have Fay Faith. She's moving up into into the battle and about to cast uh, Wind Blast. And she's using uh, Law of Heavens. But it's, uh, Ooh, it's a miscast. miscast. Do you want to talk about miscast? Sure, I do. Uh, miscast doesn't necessarily work the way that it does in tabletop. Uh, it can damage your caster, but ultimately the spell will automatically always go off. So depending on, on how low or high their health is, they can die, but generally speaking, you should be fine to keep casting. Right, so I'm starting to try to envelop the units here. They've actually broken a lot of my guys in the center. The artillery has done a, done a lot of damage to my units that were otherwise in place. And those cavalry charges as well, it all, it all adds up. So I've brought some of my, my kind of heavier infantry into the fight to help out, but I've also called Azag back and activated the, the fate of unit again, uh, just to lower the damage of this unit, and hopefully get some kills in there as well. Um, but at this point, yeah, it's start, starting to turn in my favor. I've got some units actually not doing anything. I'm not microing very well. Um, but I'm just trying to kill the remaining forces and trying to kill Fay Le Fay as well. Um, and like I said, this cavalry that I managed to recall earlier, even though there's only like 20 dudes in the unit, they've managed to get some successful charges off onto artillery and just keep them busy and keep them locked down from firing on me. Um, they seem to be kind of trying to run away up the hill as well. It seems like it's pretty much a case of just chilling through the remaining units. You've done quite a lot of damage. Yeah, so Fae Le Fae has actually tried to do another wind blast here, if you'll notice, and they just caught, just kind of caught the end of my unit there. Did a little bit of damage, and most of them were able to get up and remain unharmed. Um, so you can see they're always looking for their prime opportunity to use their magic as well. Um, and then we're just chasing down the remaining Bretonians. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, quite a successful battle, if I do say so myself. How successful was it? Quite, quite successful. Was it heroic? I might even say it was heroic victory. Oh! So there we go. Proof. We've got the victory. Um, and then we just have a little look at the battlefield. You can keep chasing down units if you want. Um, and then you just hit end battle and there we go. Boom, heroic victory. Congratulations, Darren. Easy. So we're playing on hard, by the way, as well, uh, in case people are wondering the difficulty. And um, it can get much harder and it can get much easier, depending on your play style. Well, thanks very much for showing us that battle, Darren, and join us in the future on this channel for more on Total War and Total War Warhammer. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. See you soon.